Hello YouTube. So today I have a tutorial on um, image indexing and converting a sprite or a sprite sheet to 256 color. Um, I know people have asked me for this over the years and my usual answer is either GIMP or uh, Paint.net or Photoshop or Paint Shop but those could be expensive and some could be free but I found an alternative that's a portable application that works very well and does the job excellently. So I'm going to start by showing you um, some sprites and the results. So this here is the great Sandman sprite sheet. This is the original sprite sheet. As you can see, it has his um, portrait and his other palette there all in one sheet. And it has a credit uh, box there and it has some a little um, information on how the move works. So whenever you convert a sprite sheet, you should always remove portraits and stuff. So, as you can see here, I removed the portraits and I removed the credit box. I left the little text because it shouldn't be a problem, right? Well, wrong. It is a problem. These little texts are actually multiple colors that will mess up your palette. So you should always remove them. And when you have everything all removed, your sprite sheet should just be just the character, the background, and that's it. No lines underneath their feet, no instructions on how a move works, no portraits, no palettes, no credit box. So now, with the results of the last Paint Portable, which I'll have in the description below, that's the name of the application, um, this is the result of the full image with palettes, with portraits and everything, and you know, the text. So with this, this is your palette box. It is a mess. You don't want this. This is horrible. You know, sure, you can get your character, but you may experience color loss because these portraits and colors take up boxes that you can use for your character. So never do this with the actual, actual image. Now, say you, you just remove the um, the portraits and the credit box, and all you have left is like the text, just to help you get along with it. You're still left with a bunch of colors. See, see these? You can ignore these. The nice thing about iDraw is you have a box that shows used colors and a box that shows unused colors, and all the unused colors they're not used. So this is what your uh, this is what your actual palette looks like. But I'll see all these teal colors? This is just nasty looking. It doesn't look good. Sure, you can get away with this. That's not a problem. You can get away with a lot of things, but you want to make it the best of your ability. You don't want to half-ass the work you're doing. So, close this. And now, this is a picture of how it looks when you remove everything and you just have just the character alone. So, I'm going to put the used. So, as you can see, it's just these two lines here. This is it. This is all the palette he needs. All this other stuff. I'm going to get rid of it. So to get rid of it, I'm just going to make this black. And this is using iDraw. I always recommend using this. Left click, right click, hit the gradient button. If this button is not lit up, hit this button. It disables it. And boom. Uncheck this, and that's your palette. It, it's not organized, but it's a lot prettier than having all that jumbled mess. And oddly enough, it the, the last uh, paint portable, it kind of randomly picks your alpha color. And it picked Gohan's legs as the alpha color. So if I change the alpha color, which is the first color in the palette, to pink, Gohan turns pink in all kinds of different ways. I don't know why. But so what I'm doing to fix that is I'm just going to pick a random box, make it uh, pink, uh, right click. This only works in iDraw. There are other ways to do the other programs, but this is what I'm using to, to demonstrate. So now you left click, you right click the pink, you use the color select select color tool click on teal and then press delete the whole thing becomes teal so now we need to change this teal which is what Gohan's leg was to this black luckily this black or gray is 48 48 48 so I can go here and put 48 48 48 okay so now I'm going to change this color just a little bit to teal Color select that color, select this, hit delete, Gohan's good. Now this color, I want to make this one pink, the same color I used here, turn this one black, select all of this, just like that. So now my alpha color is whatever I want it to be without issues. I know that was a little confusing, you may should you should probably um, watch that part a couple times. Um, I don't like to use pink or green. I think it hurts the eyes. Teal is a good color because it's easy on the eyes. But it's up to you what you want to use. Um, if you do use pink, I mean, that's what you're looking. You're gonna be looking at this bright color for a very long time. It's not. It's ouch. But yeah. So 
with this sprite sheet, I can use this because now my palette is very somewhat organized. Um, it looks nice. I have all my sprites. Everything's there. I'm just going to save this. So now let me show you how this program works. So this is, oh, by the way, before I do that, this is the Paint Shop Pro results. So this is the original. You see, Paint Shop Pro is the same thing. It's a bunch of jambled nonsense. This is without the um, pictures, same thing, same results, see? A bunch of teal all over the place. And then this is the after everything's removed. Same thing, I got two rows. The colors are, they look a little bit more organized, but it, it, the results are the same. You get the two rows of colors, so you're getting the, the best out of this program, which is nice. So, this is a 24-bit image, and iDraw will not open 24-bit images. I think if I check the properties, it'll tell me also details. Yes. Yeah. See, bit depth 24. So it's a 24 bit image. Now, when I open Last Paint Portable, I'm going to my image here of the original. I'm going to drag it and drop it inside. And this program is actually very nice. You can add some interesting filters to it. So, like, say I wanted to render clouds. Give it a second. I think it's thinking. Oh look, clouds suddenly appear. They're, they're teal clouds because I have teal color selected. But you know, let's, let's add some rain. Oh look, rain suddenly appeared. Uh, let's see, wind, quantity. It's interesting. I mean, it's good for like photo editing after the fact. But for Mugen, we don't need this. Anyways, you just open your image. Uh, let me undo everything I just did. You know what, let, let me just... Do it over again just for the sake of doing it over again. It doesn't hurt. Alright, so I'll put the original here. <coughs> there is no way to view the palette using this application. At least I don't know if you can. Um, I'm using it strictly as a converting program. So, uh, no, I don't want to use this one. Um, and I can't even close the picture without closing the application. Or at least I haven't figured that part out yet. Because there's no closed picture. It's just quit. Okay. Take three. Okay, so I removed the portraits, I removed the palette, I removed the credit box, I removed the text, and now I have my good image. So now I'm going to drag and drop it into um, Laz Paint. And I don't have to edit anything. I just go to File, Save As. I'm going to save it to my, uh, my indexing folder where I have everything. And this is going to be a file called check out these results and then I'll hit say then I'll pick the file type that I want I want to use PNG PNG is your best bet you can use PCX but for some reason Windows does not natively support PCX um, displaying of images it'll support PNG and JPEG more than anything else but use PNG for moving stuff uh, save it it's gonna give you a second it's gonna ask you options so now you can pick your color map you can pick 256 color which is what we want or 24 bit color and dittering so we do not want dittering dittering is something that you can use for actual images that you are editing but do not use it for sprites it will bleed the colors into each other if it does if you can't make enough colors so always uncheck dittering when working with sprites for moving so make sure 256 color is selected, hit OK, and it's saved. It took a second. So now here is it. Check out these results. And there you go. Same thing as before. And I'll just do this again just so you guys see it again. So click unused. This is not used, and this is not used. So left click, right click. Left click, double click, turn black, double click turn black okay so left right gradient button it's all black now we got to fix great Sandman's colors here so if I make this green he turns green but instead I'm going to take this box or you know any box pink okay take this teal color right click on the pink press delete okay take this teal color 
I know this one is the thing, that's how I, I know it's that color. Change it to 48, 48, 48, or whatever color it is that their body is part of the thing. Take this, right, delete, good. And now this one, I have to make this, this color, delete this one, turn it black again, there, right click, or left and right click, both is fine. Delete and done. <coughs> I know it sounds confusing. But if you do it enough times or if you just watch that piece over, you'll figure it out. So from this point, you can start ripping the sprites. They'll have a good palette. That's not too crazy. His palette alone is crazy. Like He has a lot of color bleeding. So that's why I, I used him. But um, it'll organize fairly decent for most of your characters. And that's how you would go about ripping your sprites. Or making your thing. Good. Yes.